All right, here today with something new. This is Nick at North Central Illinois Custom Kydex with a new gun. Not every day we get a new gun, but today is a lucky day. Brand new from FN. You guys have probably heard about their new gun, the 509. I did pick mine up today, so we'll be figuring out holsters here momentarily. A um, couple things in the box. This is not unboxing. I've already had it out. Um, you get your lock, you get your manual, uh, a new updated manual, which uh, I understand actually has exploded view diagrams in here, which is pretty nice. Um, also, as part of FN's kind of marketing program for this gun, they're giving you 10% off a Raven holster, 25% off a Safari Land holster, kind of nice. Um, or though you should just get your holsters from me and not worry about that and they're uh, confirm your purchase registration card uh, these are the trigger pull results so when they say five and a half to seven and a half pounds yeah it's right in there about seven to seven and a half pounds um, me and several other experienced shooters that I had uh, just kind of dry fire and handle the gun I kind of didn't believe these numbers. The trigger does not feel that heavy. It's hard to explain. Um, it doesn't feel that heavy, um, but it is according to the gauge. Just one note, I do have a standard FNS, the first generation model, and uh, right now I got that trigger at about six pounds, roughly, and it feels heavier than this trigger does at seven to seven and a half pounds. So anyway, something with the geometry or the distance that the trigger moves or something, I'm not sure what. But this is how the gun comes packaged in this uh, brown box. So if you're a dealer or a distributor uh, or you're shipping the gun, you will appreciate the smaller packaging for sure. Inside of that box, you get a little uh, zippered nylon case. Um, not top quality nylon, I wouldn't say by any means, but definitely nice. It's definitely... Uh, will fit in my range bag. I've already had it in there. Fits in there real nice. Doesn't take up a whole lot of extra room. So inside of this case, uh, you've, you've got your 509 pistol, uh, one spare magazine, and their magazine in the gun, and one additional uh, backstrap piece. Uh, my understanding is that the medium backstrap is what's shipped on the gun, the one with the little arch. The extra one they give you is the flat one which on my FNS is I do prefer the flat one uh, so I might have to change this out and test it and then they do have a large available um, from the factory not sure if you just request it or if you buy it or what um, I was uh, a little disappointed it didn't ship with it but I probably don't need it and wouldn't use it so uh, I'm not heartbroken um, one thing right off the bat uh, what I noticed on this a couple of things that I like. Number one, the texturing and the grip frame up in this area. If you are gripping the gun with a good high thumbs forward grip, uh, this area becomes very important. This is where you're putting most of the pressure uh, with the heel metacarpal area of your thumbs. So uh, the way that most guns are slick up there really doesn't work for me. That's why I'm a you know big tail and grip guy um, I like getting that rough texture up there this isn't a uh, crazy aggressive rough but it does definitely do a good job the trigger if you're familiar with the FNS at all the trigger is the same kind of articulated hinge uh, safety some people don't like that um, honestly when you're shooting this gun it, you don't necessarily even feel that you know the trigger just as soon as you put your finger on the trigger and start moving it that hinge just is gone and out of the way basically as soon as you touch the trigger uh, the other thing that i personally really like about this pistol is the sights um, i do like the factory sights uh decently enough they they are flat on the front very easy for one-handed manipulations off your belt. Uh, the thing I don't like about them is, you know, they are your standard three-dot design that everybody thinks is uh, what you need to aim a gun. Um, I like a center dot in the front, 
and then just something subdued on the back. My understanding is that these are photoluminescent, so if you charge them with light, they, they will glow in the dark. Haven't tried that yet, might try it here in a minute. Um, I should say this video is kind of going to be three parts, kind of this bench top out of the box review. Um, then second part will be kind of a comparison uh, with the FNS. I don't have my FNS with me right now, so that'll be a second part of the video I'll do uh, probably later today or tomorrow. And then the third part will be shooting. I already have had this at the range, put 100 rounds through it. I'll probably put another 100 or so through it tomorrow. Um, but the thing about the sights I do like, the, fr the front ledge, again, for one-handed uh, manipulation is very easy. I do know bill blowers you can do one-handed man manipulations with no sights on the gun but that 90 degree angle in there makes it very easy uh, maybe my favorite thing about the sights is that um, fn actually use slide cuts that are the same dimensionally as uh, sig slide cuts so if you want aftermarket sights anything out there designed for a sig or a springfield xd will fit uh, in these dovetails the slide finish is very nice. I don't know if you can see that in that light or not. Just, I mean, I haven't really gone over it closely. I don't care if it's flawless. I'm just looking at it on my phone screen here recording this and I'm saying, hey, that looks pretty dang good. Um, it is different than the FNS. It's a slicker feeling, a little bit glossier. The FNS, my 3N FNS pistols anyway, are all kind of a dry, uh, black dry finish uh, even when you oil them uh, you know after a day they just look dry again but other than that the controls are the same you know your takedown just straight out of the com FNS compact uh, your slide stop here the mag release is slightly different it's kind of flush eh, it's kind of halfway between the standard FNS and the compact um, they did give you a nice kind of cutout here in the grip for being able to get to that relatively easily. It still takes that real dedicated press, kind of like the compact. Um, my full size ones, I have a tendency to run with this middle finger. I know it's a little bit odd, but I just found that I can do that pretty easily. With the flush mag releases though, I can't do that. I do like the knurling on there. Let me get that to focus. That uh, texturing on there is pretty nice. Um, this gun is empty. Um, I know you may not believe me, but it is. Uh, I don't have my... Okay, kind of rigged my phone up there so I can show you here that the gun is empty. Um, the slide, uh, racking the slide, I mean, I have no problem with it, but I don't have a problem with most guns. It is... Um, I don't want to say heavy, but I mean, it's got a decent recoil spring in it. Um, so that was kind of the overview of the gun. If you're familiar with the original FNS, uh, you may or may not know that there are two kind of generations. There was a revision, kind of a soft revision that uh, nobody spoke of. And that happened when the compact came out. Uh, if you've compared the compact to the original FNS, You've seen differences in the striker is the most uh, obvious one, uh, but also the sear is a little bit different. And my understanding is that when the compacts came out with the updated kind of revised internals, that all the FNSs manufactured after that had the newer internals. Um, both or all three of my non-compact FNSs uh, are all older and they all have the older parts in them. So I, you know, I can't really confirm or compare that. But uh, here's the double recoil spring I was mentioning. This is basically uh, very similar to the compact. And um, the one other thing that I noticed right away on this that did look a little bit different is this bottom portion of the barrel here. It's got this polished piece right here that I'm not sure that kind of interacts with the unlocking block. Uh, I don't, I'll have to look at my compact later. I don't believe that it, uh, it, it is polished quite like that. If you have a full size FNS and you're wondering if it's kind of a, I'm using the term Gen 1 and Gen 2, that's not official. But if you're wondering, 
um, maybe what your uh, what your F and S is. It's very easy to tell once you have the slide off. If you look at the striker back here, and you can see the striker spring, the kind of Gen 2 or the revised parts is a skeletonized striker. So you can see the spring right through here, um, where on the uh, older first kind of revision parts, it was a solid striker tube or part of the striker, so you couldn't see the spring through there. So that's kind of the quickest way to tell if you've got an FNS, if it has the newer parts or not. Um, in my experience and uh, from some conversation I had is if you have the older parts, instead of buying the new, you can buy the new parts and replace them easy enough, but if you just polish the surfaces uh, where the striker and the sear uh, interact, which you probably would do anyway, and then go one step further and polish the surface where the plunger and the sear carrier interact, um, you know, you can smooth out your trigger. That is one thing I noticed right out of the box on this. It did have that kind of standard FNS, creep, not creepy, but gritty take up. Um, generally, that's pretty easy to clean up. If you look at this gun and you just move the slide release, slide stop, slide lock, whatever you want to call it, move it up and down, you can feel it where in here it's, it's rubbing on the trigger bars. So when you're pressing the trigger and the trigger bar is moving, it's actually rubbing on that metal. So um, you can work some flits or polish back in there and work it back and forth, or you can disassemble it and uh, file it down and polish it down until it's nice and smooth, and that'll get out um, a lot of that kind of gritty creep. And then also if you polish the sear carrier here, and then polish the uh, safety plunger here on the front side where it comes back and pushes on, uh, you can clean up a lot of that. Um, those are my kind of initial impressions. Um, other features or differences um, in the barrel, we talked about this cut back here being a little bit different, but at the muzzle they actually did a recessed target crown. I'm not sure how well that's going to show up here. There you can probably see that in the light. Um, Kind of a neat feature, I guess, um, on a four inch, you know, kind of duty defensive pistol. I'm not sure how much of a impact or improvement that's going to be, but um, I'm not gonna, you know, say I wouldn't want it. It's kind of neat. Uh, it does protect the rifling at the muzzle. So that's it. That's the kind of FNS bench top uh, here. Uh, just quick overview and disassembly. I'm sure I didn't touch on everything, but there's a bunch more videos out there. Um, that you guys can peruse and get more information. Uh, one last thing to mention in this section, the magazines, to my knowledge, uh, the magazines are uh, interchangeable to some degree with the FNS. Uh, uh, the difference is here, um, this bright orange follower, that's different. Uh, all my FNS mags have black followers. And the finish, instead of that kind of black chromed finish, these are just kind of a matte, satiny black. So uh, I don't know if that's better or worse or not. It is different. The base pads is basically the, the primary difference. What I understand is this mag will go in an FNS just fine. The FNS mag will not fit in the 509 frame because of the way it's shaped down here. Uh, but if you take the base pad, from this mag, put it on your FNS mag, then it will work. Or if you just buy or somehow get 509 base pads, you should be in business. Uh, I am curious, once I have a five or a FNS mag handy, where it, I'm sure it hits, I just, going off of memory, the way they're shaped, it's gonna run into this piece here. So, you know, if you wanted to, I could definitely see uh, kind of chopping the front part of this grip down here and then your FNS mag probably would work just fine. I'm not going to advise, you know, or tell you to go ahead and start hacking up your gun, but, you know, frame mods are frame mods. People do them. If you're inclined to do that, um, I, I would think that should work. Heck, me and one other guy were talking about chopping this grip down to take the compact 12-round magazine uh, because that's the size gun we want. 
four inch barrel so you can actually put a real light on it uh, because it has the full rail and uh, but a 12 round length grip so it's easy to conceal in the summer. Anyway, that's the first half of this video. Uh, the second half or second part will be coming up right away.